In this tutorial, we will continue with the assembly design workbench. How engineers do it? Before we start today's video, I would like to ask all my viewers to subscribe to my YouTube channel How Engineers Do It, to share the video among all of your friends, and also hit the bell icon to never miss another update. There are two kinds of assembly design approaches. One is the bottom up and one is the top down. In bottom-up approach, we have all the basic components that we need to assemble. We create it in the part design, we save it on our local hard drive, and later we come to the assembly and we assemble it one by one as we have done in our previous tutorial. This particular split muff coupling is being assembled as we have seen in our previous tutorial using the bottom-up approach. Now we will see how we can go about the top-down approach. Top-down approach means we design the components that we need to assemble on the go. So this is pretty interesting. As we go to the product and we get inside the product and we right-click and go for a new part here in the components. And once we have a part, and if we double click, as you can see, all the assembly tools are right here aligned. And if I double click, we change the part mode. We could also use the wireframe mode in order to create whatever we need to create here. So let's go ahead and create a simple model which we can assemble in this tutorial. So I'll go to the XY plane and start sketching it. And I will create a simple model. A simple model here. I'll do a pad. Click on OK. So that's our first part. Now I will double click here and go for the next part. And you can click No here and double click on this part. So what you're exactly doing is you have this part being created here and then you're inserting the next part. Remember that the new part that you have created is not related to this part. So you will understand it on the go. So double click on the second part. So you can see that all the tools we have here change to the part design workbench. Select the XY plane similarly and create a circle and use a pad increase the pad size click on ok and click here and again give sketch to give more detail for our part this is what we are doing here and again give a pad here so you could give a thickness of 20 mm i'll be fine now we have another part created. So double click on this product to come to the product design workbench now. Now we can see that two parts are created and they are different parts. To see that, go for the edit, move, manipulate. As I've explained about the manipulate tool before, you could use it to move it and separate it. So there is, as of now, there is no constraint being created here. So while I assemble this, I will explain you the different tools which I haven't explained in my previous tutorial. And that would complete the complete explanation of our assembly design workbench. So, firstly, as I've said before, you need to fix one of the component. So before doing that, before doing that fix, I would like to explain you about the fix together constraint. So if you try to move manipulate the component with respect to constraint try to move you can see that these two object doesn't have any relations right now so i'll click on ok and now i will go for a fix together let's see how this tool works go for the fix together and click on these two tools and click on ok so what this constraint does is this two objects are being fixed together with respect to whatever distance or measurements they have 
Now, if you try to go ahead and manipulate this tool, with respect to constraint, if I try to move it, you can see that the first part A comes with part B. So, that's pretty interesting. Now, now let's delete this component here and uh, delete that constraint, not the component. And now, fix the first component. And now let's see how we can assemble this whole component using a quick constraint. This is pretty handy constra constraint, constraining tool. So click on that and click on the both of these axes, which you can see it's appearing when it's, once you hover your mouse. And once you click, you can see that a coincidence constraint has been created. So this is automatic constraining and this creates constraints according to the situation or the uh, the edges or the circumference or whatever we show to this to this particular tool now if i click on update edit update you can see that the component goes and aligns itself to that particular location now let's see how we can use an offset command or the offset constraint. Click on the offset constraint and click on the two faces right here. And as we can see, a constraint has been created. So we specify, for example, we need a clearance of 5 mm. You click on OK and as we have done before, go to the update. And as you, as you can see, this is brought together with clearance of 5 mm here. So that's about the offset constraint. Now let's delete that offset constraint and put the object back. All right. I want to show you one more thing. Go to the move manipulate. Make sure that your with respect to constraint is on. And if you try to move it, you cannot move it. You cannot move it. The only way you can move it is in the Z axis. And the reason is because you have a constant constraint being constraining the two objects here. If you try to rotate this, you can see that it rotates because it is with respect to the Z axis. But if you try to rotate it with respect to the Y axis, it doesn't do that. Now let's go ahead and click on OK. And let's see how the quick constraint helps us to constrain or bring together these two objects. I'll select the two surfaces and automatically a contact constraint is being applied. The same quick constraint was used to apply a coincidence constraint. As I've said before, this tool works according to the situations. We will continue with the explanation of uh, assembly design workbench in our next tutorial. Thank you so much.